Thank you, Mr Speaker. Six months on, it's been six months since the October 2023 election and our New Zealand First team marked this milestone by getting across the country. We held an April tour, a grassroots tour, to provide the public with an update on the progress New Zealand First is making in Parliament and in Government. We are thankful to our supporters for the opportunity we have been afforded to advance the pro policy programme of New Zealand First and we ensure the values and principles of the party are represented in Parliament. Our team has got on with the job and we are proud to be representing our supporters and bringing a practical, pragmatic and a nationalist voice to Parliament. A number of our caucus also make up roles in government, ensuring New Zealand First's voice is represented at every level. We provide a voice in Parliament and in government, but we also need to have our eye and ear out in the community. New Zealanders need their voices heard and we will listen. New Zealand First understands the benefit and importance of engaging directly with the people and giving the public the opportunity to ask us questions. Our tour followed on from a massive State of the Nation public meeting in Palmerston North before Easter, where our leader, the Right Honourable Winston Peters, addressed over 700 in attendance. My colleagues and I then continued on from the north to the south, meeting in community halls and talking to the locals. I was fortunate enough to attend meetings in Napier, Nelson, Blenheim, Timaru, Christchurch and Dunedin and was able to speak to hundreds of everyday Kiwis. Along with the public meetings were also engagements with local stakeholders, business groups, technology organisations, residents, ratepayers, mayors and workers. Now, what did we talk about? We gave them the good news, the good news. We provided an update on what issues our teams have been working on, where we've had engagements across the country, what coalition commitments we've achieved so far, but we also wanted to answer questions and understand what issues are important. The coalition agreement details over 100 commitments across a range of categories, which forms the basis of our involvement in the government, and we have been steadfast in maintaining those commitments, even in the face of difficult challenges. We've achieved or have an ongoing commitment to cancel like Auckland Light Rail and let's get Wellington moving. We've repealed the natural Environments Act, repealed the Spatial Planning Act 2023. We've committed to moderate increases to the minimum wage each year. We've kept the superannuation age at 65. We've reserved the rights against the proposed amendments to the WHO health regulations to allow the incoming government to consider these against a national interest test. We've protected freedom of speech by ruling out the induction of hate speech legislation and we've stopped the Law Commission's work on hate speech legislation. We stopped all that work on Hapua Pua, required the Public Service Department and Crown entities to communicate primary in English, except those specifically related to Māori. We have public service departments moving to changing their names primary to English. We have committed that in the absence of a referendum, our government will not change the official name of New Zealand. And we have made a start on many more, such as the COVID inquiry, what these guys don't want to see, the investigation into Marsden Point yep. and the work to repeal the Therapeutics Product Act. Yep. We've had great feedback, Mr Speaker, to those people that we have spoken to. We have had great support in the job that our team are doing. They agree with our leader, the Onston, uh, the, on, on, the, <laughs> the Honourable Winston Peters, that we bring the steel to the government and that there are many issues that our supporters are watching with anticipation. 
New Zealand First has plenty of work to do and our team will get on with that job. Thank you, Mr Speaker.